why it's so hard to heal chronic inflammatory response syndrome and how to heal it. It's all about trauma, but it's not what you think. So if you see the word trauma and you think, oh, I don't want to watch this video, it's not what you think. I mean, it is a little bit. There is some of, there is some of what you think it is, but there's more. There's more to it than just that. So it's not what you think, but it is, but it's not just that. So as we come down here, we have to look at trauma through through these two lenses. Let me, see, let me just get this little thing to slide away. Cool. So we have to look at we have to look at trauma through two different lenses because we live in a universe of duality, and trauma doesn't just have one aspect; it has two. It has a masculine and a feminine aspect, and you don't need to know anything about polarity. You don't need to know anything about masculine or feminine energy. All you need to know is masculine represents more physical in this context and feminine represents more like non-physical so it's like think about your physical body it's like here you know you can measure it you can touch it you can feel it your emotions your thoughts they're not like where are they you know i don't i don't really know i don't think anyone really knows but they're there they're there somewhere but they're 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 non-physical you wherever you go you fly to hawaii they're still there they're still with you but you don't know where they are but so there's two aspects. There's this physical aspect and there's this feminine aspect. This masculine, feminine, physical, non-physical. And these are both really important because if you're trying to solve this problem, looking at only one of these lenses and you're not putting any attention on the other one, you're never going to find the solution because the solution is in finding harmony between both of these things, is doing the physical and the non-physical together, both at the same time. If you do one, then you do the other, it won't work. If you do the other, then you do the first, that also won't work. You need to do both of them at the same time. That's where the solution is found. So just some examples here. The physical aspects of trauma are things like physical toxicity, physical deficiency, structural trauma, microbiome imbalance, organ dysfunction. So as I said, very, very physical, very tangible, very measurable. You know, you can measure mycotoxins in your urine. You can measure heavy metals in your like in a, a hair root analysis, you can look for structural trauma through an x-ray. You know, you can see if your spine's all like bent or crooked. You can look at your microbiome doing a stool test. You know, there's lots of different things you can do to like physically measure these things. But as you're going to see, we're going to swap over to the non-physical, the emotional, the feminine aspects. You can't really measure these things. You know, there's no like, and of course you can do like quizzes or like how traumatized am I? Or is it anxiety? Is it depression? Like the, you can kind of get a bit of metrics, but you can't really measure emotions. It doesn't, doesn't really work. So these are things like emotional toxicity, emotional deficiency, suppressed, repressed emotions, addiction, coping or avoidance strategies, generational trauma and things like that. So to tell you a little bit more about what these mean. So emotional toxicity might mean having to live with narcissistic parents or being in a narcissistic relationship or also we've got like deficiency would be more like being in a neglectful household you know where you aren't having your needs met whatever whatever they are not consistently not being met so it's more of like a deficiency you know maybe you don't get enough uh like physical touch i know that's a physical thing but that's actually more of a that's more traumatizing emotionally so you've got that and you've got like addiction coping coping mechanisms avoidance when you're doing this you're taking yourself out of it it's the only way you know how to how to how to cope but it stops you from like completing the like healing the trauma completing the loop so this just gives you like a little bit of, a, of an example and we're, we're going to go into these a little bit more a little bit further down so every time i scroll out it zooms instead of scrolling it's very very odd so this is the the source infinity loop i just i just made this this i mean it took like five minutes to do but to think this process through took me some time so this is a loop that people get stuck in and this is what's happening if you have chronic inflammatory response syndrome. This is also what's happening if you have, it's very interesting. This is also what happens if you have an eating disorder, often. This is also what happens if you have uh, MCAS, mast cell activation syndrome. And if you have food sensitivities as well, this, this loop applies to a lot of different things. But I would say all like CIRS is like the big thing at the top where this is most applicable. So you have to trigger. This is like the thing that, I'm sure, I'm sure if you're watching this and you know what chronic inflammatory response is, you know what trigger is. You know, this can be like going into a moldy building. This could be smelling petroleum fumes. This can be smelling some perfume. This can be putting some kind of body lotion on your skin and you react to, you know, something externally creates 
it is like a, a triggering substance. And that causes the reaction or the response. And this is often a symptom. You're going to see that this isn't always a symptom, especially when we're working on the non-physical, because again, physical is looking more at the physical body. That's where you're going to see that reaction response in the physical body. And a reaction or a response in a physical body is called a symptom. But it isn't always inside the physical body, but we'll elaborate more on that in a bit. And the next step in this cycle is the, the consequence, which is most often avoidance. And I would say in this case where we have this loop occurring, avoidance is the predominant consequence. So it's like we get exposed to something, it triggers a symptom inside our body. And obviously when that triggers something inside our body, we don't like it. We don't like how that makes us feel. And consequently, we avoid it. But when we do this, when we avoid, we actually increase our sensitivity to whatever it is that triggered us in the first place. And then you get stuck in this loop. Now, when you get triggered, it actually triggers an even worse reaction, an even more powerful response, an even more powerful symptom. And then you get stuck in this loop where it just goes indefinitely and you get more and more and more and more sensitive. And I see this over and over. I saw it with this myself. I saw this with, with almost everybody that I work with, especially with some of the, the, the information that's out there on the internet about restricting your diet. So it's like you have a trick, you eat a food or you, you hear like, oh, I need to go gluten free or I need to restrict my diet in some way. You eat the food, it triggers a response, you avoid it, you get more sensitive. And then you just keep cutting food out of your diet and you cut more things and more things and more things. And then you're stuck exactly where I was, where all you can eat is five different foods. And that's your whole life. And that's all you can do. You can just eat five foods. So this applies to chemicals, this applies to toxins, this applies to, this works emotionally as well. So if you have been bullied or if you have um, negative experiences with, with, with people, like socialization, like anxiety disorders, this is basically exactly the same thing. You have a trigger, which triggers a physical symptom inside your body. You know, maybe you feel like shaky, you feel like you're gonna have a panic attack, you don't like how you're feeling. So then again, it doesn't have to be physical, it can be non-physical as well. As a consequence, you avoid doing that and then you actually become more sensitive to it. This is how people develop things like agoraphobia or panic disorders. They get stuck in this loop as well. So this loop, we're looking at it in chronic inflammatory response syndrome, but this applies to a lot of different things. This is a really tricky loop. And the thing that's the, the worst about it is it, it's called the infinity loop. It just goes forever and it'll just get worse and worse and worse and worse. So, so moving on from here, what do we do and how can we break this cycle? A key principle, and you're going to see that I'm mentioning this over and over and over again throughout this presentation. Key principle is safety. We're going to be looking at safety throughout. That's the theme of this, of this whole thing. The solution is safety. So we're going to start on the physical aspects. Why? Why do we start on the physical aspect? One, it is easier. Like it's easier for your logical brain when I'm saying like, okay, we need to look at physical toxins that are measurable in your body. We need to look at the composition of your gut flora. Like these are all measurable. These are all things on tests. You know, this is like, okay, I can look at with this. You know, there's, it seems like reality is fine. So more tangible, it's like you can measure it. So it's easier to get started with. And, but even still it sets a good foundation. You know, if you are going to work, if you do have a feminine component of a feminine energy, uh, more emotional trauma-based component to your chronic inflammatory response syndrome or any of the other conditions that I've talked about, having a good foundation in your body, you know, where you have less toxins, where you have nutrients, where your neurotransmitters in your brain are working properly, that's only going to help you to work on doing those other things. You know, it's not going to hurt. It's only going to help. In fact, it's going to make it a hell of a lot easier. So we start on the physical because it's easier and it's just a good place to start. It sets a good foundation. So we would want to be looking at, at these Five, five plus things. So physical toxicity, physical deficiency, structural trauma, microbiome imbalance, and organ dysfunction. I already have videos about most of these subjects, if not all of them. And you can just find them by just opening YouTube and just type William Dickinson and then whatever topic you want. So you could just type William Dickinson, physical toxicity, that would work really great. One video that I could suggest to you for that one would be to look at my six step process to eliminate mycotoxins. So you could just type William Dickinson, mold, uh, detoxification and that will show you my six step process to detox all fat soluble vitamin uh, all fat soluble toxins from your body so this is mycotoxins but this is metals this is plastics this is pesticides this is all of these fat soluble toxins that are usually the the really the really toxic ones works for all of them i'm talking about mycotoxins in the video and i'm going to be talking about mold in this one as well because it's the most common thing it's the thing that i work through and it's the thing i see a lot in my work but this works for loads of different things as well 
uh, physical deficiency. I've got loads of videos about diet, structural trauma. I've, I did one recently looking all about like the gallbladder. And my, I have so many different videos about the physiology of your body. Microbiome, I've got so many videos about that. So just, I don't want to cover this too much today because this isn't where most people are stuck. And if it is, I already have a video about it already. So go watch that instead. So as I said, you can just go on YouTube, type my name, William Dickinson, followed by any of these topics and you'll, you'll find something. You, if, you, if you're just starting this and you're like, okay, I have CIRS, I need to start on physical stuff. Where do I start? Go on my channel and just look at the gut health playlist. There's like 30 videos in there. It will make your gut indestructible. Just go, go and watch that. That's a really good place to start. But if you're a bit of a veteran, you know, if, I, if, if, I'm, if you're reading through these things and you're like, I know what physical toxicity is. I know about deficiencies. I know about structural trauma. I already know about my microbiome. Like if you're like, okay, this is, I, I haven't learned anything new yet. This is really, th this presentation is for you. And the next section is going to be where you're going to get your results. But if this is all a bit much for you, this is where you should start. So go check out my YouTube. So as we go, how do we break this loop? So we have, we have the trigger. You can't, you can never, you can never change the trigger. You can, you can do mold avoidance. You know, you can try and reduce the chemicals that you're in in your environment. You know, I really did this to the ends of the earth. I lived a completely chemically free lifestyle. It's absolutely unsustainable. You will never have friends. You will never be able to eat out. You will never be able to actually live your life as you're supposed to live it. And because this isn't actually the solution to the problem, just getting rid of the trigger does not fix this problem. You cannot change the reaction or the response. Your body is going to manifest a physical symptom and you can't do anything about that. It's going to, the trigger is going to cause the, the, the symptom to happen. You can't do anything about that. There's no, there is no like way to get in here. There's, there's no way to interrupt that part of the process, but this is where we have control. When we have the reaction or the response, the, the physical symptom, we can do something differently with the, the consequence. So what we do after we develop the symptom, that is where all of our power is. That is where the solution to this problem is. This is where we can break that loop. And again, key principle, as you can see, safety. We, instead of going, if we follow this loop, you can see that this, the reason this loop perpetuates itself is because it goes from the consequence of avoidance why would you avoid something unless it was dangerous? So by avoiding it, you're giving your body the signal, okay, this is dangerous. That response was appropriate. We should become more sensitive. That's the biofeedback that you give your body when you make that consequence, that decision to avoid. So instead, what we need to do is instead of perpetuating this loop infinitely, we need to break the cycle here at this consequence. And instead of avoiding it, we need to work on cultivating safety. So... Key principle, again, safety. We need to change the consequence. We need to change what the reaction means. And we need to change how you perceive the reaction. So I know there's probably a good handful of people that are already like, but mold is toxic, but metals are toxic. I should always want to have a reaction to those things. And you're absolutely right. But we're going to cover that in just a second. So the consequence, the action that we take after a reaction determines if the exposure, trigger, and reaction are saved in our nervous systems as safe or unsafe. The way that we respond to the trigger and the reaction slash response determines how we save this event in our nervous system. If you go through this consequence into avoidance and develop increased sensitivity, you are saving this event into your nervous system as, as an unsafe event. So it's triggering increased sensitivity. It's triggering increased predisposition to trigger a reaction in the future. And it's going to heighten the, the power of that reaction. So what we need to do instead is, okay, let, let me just give you this next step. So this isn't just a one solution problem. There's actually, there's a split here. So there's two different levels of this problem. The first is that, We've got safe things are triggering an unsafe reaction. So as, I, as I've said here, there are, there are levels of safe and unsafe and therefore two problems to solve. So if we're going to this, to, this, to this side over here, we've got something that is safe, is saving in your nervous system as an unsafe thing. So it's like you eat a food that is actually healthy for you. So this could be, this could be anything. This could be maybe you have histamine intolerance and this is something that has a higher amount of histamine in it. 
and you eat this food, but your body perceives this as dangerous for some reason, even though physiologically it's not. It's not physiologically dangerous for your body at all. But it's triggering an unsafe reaction, and that causes a reaction. This can cause your body to react. This can cause it to trigger up a flare. This can cause the hives, the rashes, the immune response, the fatigue, the anxiety, the depression, whatever it is. Because the body is perceiving something as unsafe just because it's perceived it as unsafe in the past. And it's possible, but at some part in your healing process, you didn't have the ability to digest that food. So let's let's say it was what's a really what's a really nice example. Let's use eggs because eggs is really controversial because you've got medical medium saying that they're the, the bane of everybody's health. And yeah, so but let's use eggs because eggs are a really fun one. So let's say you you eat an egg. If in the past you didn't have the ability to digest egg, or this is a really interesting example, some vaccinations are grown on the egg white. And when they're injected in the body, they trigger an immune response. So the body can learn that the proteins in the egg white are dangerous because when that injection happened, it triggered an immune response saying this is dangerous. So then in the future, when they are exposed to the egg whites, it triggers the same response. So it's like the body has kind of accidentally learned that this safe thing is actually unsafe. And now it triggers a reaction. And then somebody develops the sensitivity to X. So what we need to do is re-educate the body to, to help it understand this is actually okay. This food is actually okay. Whereas on the other side of this problem, we've got sort of like, so we, we, so here I've written it as unsafe level two is saving inside the nervous system as unsafe level eight. So what I mean here is your body has a, an unsafety trigger that we actually want to activate when you are exposed to something that is unsafe. So if you are exposed to mold or mercury or some kind of environmental toxicity or someone sprays deodorant in your face or I don't know, something happens and your body is exposed to toxins, you want it to trigger a response because that's how it's going to detoxify itself and that's how it's going to keep you alive. However, if you're exposed to a level two, like a level two amount of toxicity, but your body reacts as if it's been exposed to level A, the reaction is completely out of balance. It's completely uncalibrated. And that's not healthy. A level two reaction should cause a level two, a level two exposure should cause a level two reaction. The, the reaction should be appropriate to the exposure. However, in this circumstance, and this, this, so I'll scroll down in just a second and you can see, but this, this situation often happens when you're exposed to toxicity for an extended period of time. So if you're like living in mold, for example, your body learns even a tiny bit of mold is the biggest threat on the whole planet. And it's not, especially if you're like well into recovery. It's, it doesn't need to trigger a response like that. It's not actually helpful. It's completely blown out of proportion. So let's go down. Let's have a look here. So on this side where we've got, so again, I'm going to talk about this side over here. So unsafe level two saving as unsafe level eight. So we it basically we're having a disproportionate response. So this dynamic is most often instigated in, in masculine wounds than perpetuated in feminine energy. Example. So this is an example of this dynamic that I'm describing. Mold exposure is toxic and harmful. And this is always true. Like even if you're totally healthy, you still, it's still not, not good for you to be exposed. So mole exposure is always toxic and harmful, but the response can be inappropriate to the level of exposure. So what we want is your body to be exposed and to have a response that is actually appropriate with the level of exposure. So this can develop when you are exposed to a substance for a very long time, the, 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 the proportion of response in relation to the exposure is, is completely imbalanced. And when this happens, it's, it's, it's unhealthy and we have to welcome retraining this response. We have to help the body see, okay, this is dangerous. You are right. And in this case, you probably do want to try and eliminate these exposures. You know, don't go and expose yourself when it's, I mean, I mean, why, why would you expose yourself for, for, for no reason? Obviously. So this is, that's more of the physical energy. It's like, don't put your body in the physical environment that keeps it sick. So obviously you don't want to do that, but then what we can make that mean can blow the reaction well out of proportion. So by, by this, I mean, when we say you have to go somewhere and you experience that there's some, some mold exposure, you know, maybe you, you rent a hotel and you have to stay at the hotel for a night and there's some mold there, you know, 
maybe it's really not a big deal. Your body is healthy enough that it can handle it. And it's, and it's, it's not good. You know, maybe you're not hundred percent performance the next day, but you're okay. You know, your body can handle it, but because you've had trauma from this, so this would be more like emotional trauma on top. You're like, this made me super sick in the past. And now I'm going to trigger an emotional response because I feel really unsafe. You know, I feel like my body is weak and it can't handle this and I'm going to get sick again and I'm going to go back into that hole and all my symptoms are going to come back and I'm going to die and it's going to be awful. But in reality, your body can handle it. Your body's strong. It's fine. But it's that perpetuation, that belief system, those thoughts, those emotions that's actually causing that inappropriate response. And we're going to switch back to the other side. So when we've got this situation of safe, saving is unsafe. This is a dynamic that without exception has its roots in feminine wounds. So this means it's not about physical reality. It's about emotions. It's about relationships, relationships with food, relationships with, with, with the world, relationships with, with people. This dynamic without exception. So I really mean that without exception. There is, there is no case where this, is, this has not been true. So I'm not just saying this because this has been my experience. I've now worked with hundreds of people and I see this over and over and over again. So I say without exception with, with a high level of confidence. This dynamic without exception has its roots in feminine wounds, most often with trauma connected to personal power and trusting one's instincts. So a really good example, and I like to use this, this example here because it's my personal example. So I know it inside out because I lived it, was having developed a uh, somatic food intolerance that was actually an eating disorder. So in this case, I did lose the ability to digest lots of foods because I had a mold exposure. So my body didn't have the machinery to digest them. You know, my body developed SIBO and all of these other different symptoms as a, as an adaptive response to try and survive the mold exposure. But as a result, I lost the ability to digest and absorb nutrients from lots of foods. So I cut them out but they've reached a certain point where my body had the physical ability to digest these foods again, but the amount of unsafety that I experienced with those foods made it so that my body could not tolerate them. So if I would eat them, I would perceive them as so unsafe because of how sick they'd made me before when I was actually being exposed to mold that it was, the, so I would go into, I would go into this loop up here this consequence loop and I would it would the symptoms would trigger me awfully and the consequence would be avoidance and I would just avoid indefinitely avoid these foods indefinitely even though physically I had the ability to digest them again on the masculine energy in the physical reality in physical world I had the ability to digest these foods again emotionally I was still afraid of them so I couldn't digest them and I if I would eat them I would have a physical response you know this wasn't like so this is a really, I have another video about this. So you can go and check the other video. It's, it's ARFIT, Avoidant Restrictive Food Intake Disorder. Super interesting. It's an eating disorder, unlike like anorexia and bulimia. I mean, they still have similar patterns. You know, they're all about control. They're all about trusting your yourself and your own instincts. But ARFIT is something very interesting. And if you're, if, you've, if you're relating to what I'm talking about and you're finding this interesting and you're thinking, okay, maybe... There is some level of feminine energy. There is some emotional trauma. There is some kind of perpetuation of, of this situation, this CIRS from the emotional side. Definitely take a look into ARFID. It's a really interesting uh, new diagnosis. It's, it's, it's actually very new. It's actually a very new medical condition that's, that's been put into the, the DSM-5, which is the mental health like, diagnostics a book so it's, it's actually very new but it's, it's very appropriate in this in this situation so we all know this safe saving as unsafe what this actually looks like is you have a food craving for a food that you want to eat this is your feminine energy inside your body is saying i think the thing that would make me the most healthy is to eat this and then either your brain says like that is not a good food to eat like, that's bad i shouldn't eat that that's unhealthy that is that food is dangerous that food will trigger a reaction but it's like now you've got this 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 lack of self-trust where you have your own appetite you have your body which is a, a vastly more intelligent organism than than our minds you know your brain is doing all of your detoxification it's doing your body is doing is doing everything you know it's regulating your blood pressure 
It's regulating your perspiration. It's regulating how constricted and dilated your blood vessels are. It's digesting your food. It's regulating every single function inside your whole body. You know, you're not doing that with your mind. Your body is doing it. And if your body is giving you an instinct to eat a certain food, there's a reason. So if you're having instincts to, so your instinct to eat food is your appetite. It's like, it's like the deepest form of self-intimacy and self-trust. Like, I know what I want to eat. You, you trust yourself. If you don't trust yourself there, then you're seeing safe as unsafe. For some reason, there's a wire that's been crossed somewhere and you've fallen out of touch with your instincts. You've fallen out of touch with being able to trust your body and being able to communicate with it and being able to receive communications from it and trusting it. And this is this, is this example here. It's the safe, saving as unsafe. It's this food that I need to eat this food that I'm hungry for, this food that I have appetite for is dangerous and it's going to make me sick. But it, it, and it may be if you, if you do have this physical stuff going on, but if the physical stuff is primarily resolved and if you've been working through healing chronic inflammatory response syndrome for a few years and you've got to the point where you've reintroduced a lot of foods or you've been working or your symptoms are a lot better, but you're still really struggling and things are still triggering you all of the time, there's probably more of this. So what is the solution here? How do we actually solve this problem? Well, if it's the physical, you need to go and watch those other videos. You need to go and see the other stuff I have on my channel because that's where you're going to get your answers. But if you've done all of those things already, if you've done lots of physical stuff, if you've worked with like four or five different practitioners that have all been focused on the physical stuff, maybe this is the time that you actually look at the other side of this problem. Because I was like that, you know, I worked on the physical stuff for, for years and it will only get you so far because you have to look at this problem holistically it's a whole you have to do the masculine the physical and the feminine the non-physical at the same time that's where you're going to get your results and i'm going to keep saying it because i want you to get well and i know that not everybody wants to hear it but if you've listened this far through this is your sign this is your calling look into this side of healing because this is where you're going to get your results so the solution Working on the following emotions has been the most effective solution in my experience. And again, not just mine, that of my clients, my hundreds of clients that have worked on resolving exactly these problems. Love, trust, empowerment, personal strength, judgment and acceptance, and pleasure. I could do, I will do a whole video on just these topics alone. These are, these are, these have been so powerfully healing in my, in my process. And it's like, I sit here now, and I think about where I was five years ago and I think I sound like such a hippie, <laughs> you know, I'm like, Ooh, like, Ooh, like emotions and spiritual stuff. And it, I, this isn't what I wanted. I, I did not ask for this. I was, I always say I was a child of logic and science. You know, I loved science and logical stuff because it made sense and it was measurable. And I would even talk to my doctors. I'm like, I have gas in my stomach. Where can the gas come from? Either it's swallowed air or it's produced by bacteria. It's like, Logical deduction, it must be bacteria. Oh, I have SIBO, wow. I've deduced that and the doctors couldn't figure it out. It wasn't just a physical thing. You know, there was so much emotional work to be done there as well. I will talk about these things. Some stories that I want to tell you on finally safety. So it's, it, safety is at the root of, of all of this. Safety is, safety is the solution. It's finding safety inside yourself, safety inside trusting yourself, safety so all of these things are all about safety love trust empowerment personal strength judgment acceptance pleasure they're all about safety so you could basically say this condition chronic inflammatory response syndrome is categorically unsafety that is that is in essence what it is so the solution is not going to be found in more unsafety. The solution is going to be found in safety. So cultivate these traits, love, trust, empowerment, personal strength, judgment and acceptance, pleasure and safety. If you need help doing that, I would be very happy to help you do that. I am far from a master, but I'm far from a novice as well. I have walked this path. I have helped hundreds of people walk it too. Whether you need help on that physical aspect, that more masculine energy, the detox. As I said, I have a YouTube channel going full of, full of stuff. Go and have a play with that. If you get started with it and you're like, wow, this is more complex than I thought, I would like some help. Just reach out and send me a message. If you've already done all of that, if you've done five functional medicine practitioners and you're done and you just don't care anymore, you just do whatever you have to to get the results. You do whatever you have to to get healing. 
like me. That's why I came to this space. Not because I wanted to, because I was going to do whatever the hell it took me to get those results. And this is where it took me. If you want help with doing either of these, the physical, the masculine, the feminine, the emotional, I can help you with both. And if I can't, for some reason, I will help you find somebody that can. So just reach out. Let me know if I can help you in any way. It would honestly be my pleasure. So to recap from today's video, let's scroll all the way back to the top. Why it's so hard to heal chronic inflammatory response syndrome and how to heal it. It's about trauma. The reason that people struggle for such a long time and why it's so hard is they're only focused on one or the other of the aspects, not both at the same time. We need to look at the physical masculine aspects of trauma and the emotional feminine aspects of trauma and heal them both at the same time. That is where the results are. Don't get stuck in the chronic inflammatory response syndrome infinity loop where you are triggered some kind of environmental trigger, mold, a food that you're sensitive to, something. It triggers a reaction or response or a symptom inside of your body, which leads to the consequence of you avoiding that trigger even further, which increases your sensitivity. This is not the solution. If this is a physical toxin, like mold, obviously avoid it as much as possible. But just know that just avoiding it is not enough to break this loop. Avoiding it will keep your symptoms down. It will help to work on that physical side, but it's doing nothing to re-educate that emotional side. It's actually perpetuating it. So we need to work on changing that relationship. How do we break this cycle? Safety. Safety is at the forefront of your mind. Start on the physical aspects because it's easier, it is more tangible, and it sets a foundation. So then we can work on doing the other stuff at the same time as doing this. But if that other stuff's a bit much for you, start here. If you need help starting here, check out my YouTube channel. You can literally search any topic and my name, and it will give you one of my videos that is somewhat related to that topic. And if even that, if you need more help than that, reach out, let me know, and I will help you. This is how we break the loop from a feminine energy perspective. We cannot change the trigger. The trigger is there. We cannot change the response or the symptom. The symptom is there. What we change is the consequence. Instead of avoiding and moving into increased sensitivity, we change the consequence. We change what the reaction means and we change how we perceive the reaction. So some of the big breakthroughs here for me were a symptom doesn't always mean you did something wrong. Whenever I would eat a food and have a reaction, I would think I've done something wrong. My body is asking for help. That's not always true. It's, it's not true. It can be, but it isn't always. Another one that, that was uh, very life-changing for me, changing what the reaction means. Does the reaction mean I'm weak? No, having a reaction doesn't mean my body isn't strong. It's, it's okay, I am strong. So we need to change what the reaction means to you and we need to change how you perceive that reaction. The consequence or action that we take after the reaction determines if the exposure, trigger and reaction are saved in our nervous systems as safe and unsafe. I want you to take away from this presentation after every single thing you do, did this save in my nervous system as safe or unsafe? When you eat that meal, where, how did it save? When you have that discussion with that person, when you have that argument or that disagreement, how did it save in your nervous system? Did it save as safe or unsafe? And then if it did save as unsafe, see if it saved as unsafe in appropriate calibration to how unsafe it actually was. You know, If you have an argument with your partner about what kind of toothbrush you should buy, you should not trigger a response that makes you feel like you're going to be abandoned and break up. That is not an appropriate response. That is an incalibrated response. You need to work on that. So this was this is this was too dense for me to recap. So <laughs> if you need a recap, go watch the video again. That was basically the whole video. Solution: work on the following emotions: love, trust, empowerment, personal strength, judgment and acceptance, pleasure, and safety. That is everything for today's video. If you have any questions, please leave me them as a comment. If you need any help with solving this problem, I can help you solve it. Please reach out and let me know. I will see you soon. Goodbye. Oh, that was just stopping the share. Now you see me in full screen. Now I'm really going. I can figure out how to do it. <laughs> Goodbye.